very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the abridged version of the show. It's the midweek edition. The promises to be exciting. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Before I introduce my partner on the show tonight, let me quickly take you through what is happening in England well, with regards to the English Premier League. Uh, more than 80 minutes played across all centres in the English Premier League. Let's give you a situation report as we have it. Uh, of course, four matches currently going on as we speak. Chelsea and Arsenal. It is Arsenal leading 3-2 at Stamford Bridge. You have Everton and Leicester. Leicester City leading in that game. Newcastle and Crystal Palace. It's a six minutes of football played. And uh, in that game, Newcastle leading by a goal. The Manchester City knowing fully well that they need to win their game. They are two goals ahead against Brighton, Hove and Havio. Uh, the game uh, 73 minutes played. In other games, uh, we are approaching 19 minutes, 87 minutes played in all of those venues. And I'm hoping that uh, you will get to see those results even as we move on on the show. We promise to be your eyes and your ears uh, to let you know what's going on across the venues where the English Premier League matches are currently going on, just in case you're not watching those uh, games. All right, before I move on on the show, let's quickly introduce uh, our friend, a friend of the house, Yinka Olewa. He joins us all the way from Ilori, Quara State. Greetings to you, Yinka. Thanks for finding out time to be with us on a day like this. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Yemi. I'm glad uh, to be back uh, to, I mean, on the channel spots tonight, this beautiful Wednesday evening. All right, let's just dive straight into it. Let's go to Nigeria Professional Football League. Five matches played today as somebody who loves the Nigeria Football League and as somebody who has a particular club that he has emotional ties to. I want you to take me through the stories behind these games. I'm going to reel out uh, the results as we have them on uh, screen. Casina United defeated, uh, of course, Shooting Stars 3-1. Lobby Stars defeated Gobe United 2-1. Quara United, uh, that's uh, you can see, were held to a one-all draw by Abia Warriors. Noeja Tornadoes defeated, uh, of course, Rangers International 2-1. All of these games are March Day 24. Games played today, Wednesday. There will be uh, other games uh, later on. Uh, there's also another game played. Remo Stars, of course, defeated uh, the Kada 4 1. You'll get to see that uh, in a bit. All right, so let me just go to Yinka. You'll see four matches on the, gray, uh, on the screen. It's actually five. But take us through what you think. Uh, and there you have it. There you have it. Uh, of course, Remo Stars defeated the Kada FC. So, Yinka. Your thoughts on the five matches you've seen before we go to the ones that will be played tomorrow? Um, I think um, there are no surprises. Um, uh, some of the games lived out um, to the building. The only surprise there uh, for me is the Raymond game. Uh, Raymond has not been doing badly as far as the season is concerned. Uh, many thanks to Benga Ogobote who has... Um, they're doing a whole lot to ensure that um, uh, uh, Remo do something fantastic in the league this season. And when you go through other results, you expect um, victories in almost where uh, we are seeing victory. The only surprise there was I was expecting Quarry United to beat other, other Warriors um, today. But you know, when you look at it for quite some uh, uh, two, three seasons now, Abia Warriors have been giving Quarry United a whole lot of. Um, uh, problem when it comes to lowering, it was um, but I had asked to leave it very late last season before uh, the equalized uh, in the uh, in the injury time before the equalized last season. They played a one all draw in uh, the home of Abia Warriors, Abia Warriors team today. But I think um, Abia Warriors came with a plan uh, from the start of the game to the end of the game. They they executed what they came to do. They didn't come to play a draw because they went all out against Quara United. And for me, they were the better side as far as the game is concerned today. Because on the side of Quara United, they really did not really bite enough. Don't forget that uh, the team has not um, won any game uh, in the last uh, four games or thereabouts. And I spoke with um, 
the coach of the team after today's game to find out what is um, the problem because it seems that there's the morale in the in the choir night camp is very low. And uh, one of my colleagues also asked about the fact that maybe uh, there's some kind of a monetary advantage that was supposed to go to the team that is not coming. But the coach denied it. Uh, there's nothing like that. that um, they are up to are up to date as far as um, their obligation to prepare is concerned. But you know, it's surprising to see this is the second home draw to you know to Car United. They, uh, I mean, the two forced them to uh, one or draw the last time. Um, uh, I mean, Abia Warriors today. So for me, Abia Warrior um, was the better side uh, yeah. against today. All right. So that's it. Um, uh, you've told us uh, your thoughts on the games that happened today. A lot of people will be interested in the five set of matches that we play tomorrow because you have uh, the two teams that a lot of you uh, consider as the title chasers in, in that mix. You have Plus United and Reverse United. So let's just quickly take a look at uh, match day 24, matches to be played on Thursday. Aqua United up against National United. Aimba uh, International up against Kano Pillars in years gone by. This is the big fixture. It actually still is a big fixture, uh, even though you, you, you can't say technically, but not in a running for the title this season. Heartland will take on Plus United. Hebefem uh, will take on uh, Wiki Torres. So these are the fixtures. And, of course, the big one, Sunshine Stars will take on Rivers United. I, I want to get what, your thoughts I mean, um, first. Before you talk yeah. about this game, I, I've always been asking people that I get a chance to talk to people who love the league. Do you think this season is a two-us race or there's still somebody, uh, a team, with 40 matches left to play that can still be a title contender? Uh, well, I think it's going to be a, a, um, a two-us man race because it has been uh, the game between, uh, I mean, uh, PSG United and Rivers United. It have been the two sides that have shown the consistency to win the league this season. But I'm not surprised with what um, Rivers United is doing. They have the longest serving manager in the country, as we yeah. speak, in uh, Stalin Eguma. And it seems that they have a plan for a very long time. The plans are paying off now. I want you to talk about one of the youngest, finest coach in the country at the moment. You talk about Patao Osho. So it's a mixture of experience and uh, and um, uh, the I mean, youthful side of, of yes. the game. So, yes. Uh, it is for Rivers United to lose, if you ask me. But I, 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 the, the other time, I did also ask um, Fidel Isfile Chuko if um, the one world draw he got against Korea United the lawyer was a boost to their, uh, to their aspiration to win the league. And he said they are not after anybody. They are only playing, working very hard to finish in a very strong position at the end of the season. I think it's a way uh, to play down. Uh, inside uh, winning the league, and I love that. Uh, he doesn't want uh, what, what is happening at the moment to get to to the end of the players because when that sinks into their head, it could cost them uh, their, the 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 chance that is there for them. But I think it's going to be uh, the battle between uh, uh, Rivers United and the two United at the end of the day. But both of them have really, really shown class. They've really shown consistency. I love what I saw when Rivers United came here the other time. I mean, when Plague United came to Elon the other time, they gave a very good fight. They 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 had a plan, they executed their plan throughout the game. Um Fidelis in the Chuku in the 56 minutes of that game of their about brought in three players. Those three players really cost Cora United um, a lot of trouble in that particular game. So I think it's a fantastic um, uh, coach who will uh who will give uh, Rivers United uh sleepless night till the end of um the season, uh, but I think the two of them have shown the consistency to win the 2021-2022 Nigerian Professional Football League. Season. Okay, all right, we'll, we'll keep that somewhere, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say you cut it also. And uh, if it happens not to, <laughs> if it doesn't turn out that way, we'll also say Yika said this. But anyway, uh, which of the games tomorrow do you think what well, you know a football lover should, should watch out for if? You, if you were going to advise somebody who wants to see domestic football at its best, which one of those venues or one or two of those venues would you ask the person to go to see uh, domestic football at its best? Well, um, uh, two games. Um, Atlanta, uh, United. Atlanta is struggling. 
to stay in the league, especially United trying to catch up with Rivers United. So it's a game of somebody um, who is um, who is trying to maintain a particular status quo and a game for a survivor. So Atlanta is going to be throwing everything into that particular game. Why um, Pretoria United will be replying uh, the fact that uh, they uh, having at the back of their mind that is a game for them to, to win. So that would make that uh, that would make that very interesting. The second game will be between Imba and Cano Pillars. Imba Cano Pillars is going to be uh, a game two of the two of the biggest sides before now, but both of them have not really done well this season. Cano Pillars, if you, if you ask me, um, they, are, they will be playing for Survivor. Why Imba? Will be trying as much as possible that there's still a lot of games to be played from, uh, before the end of the season. So it's going to be an opportunity for them thinking there will be an opportunity for them to catch up. So it's going to be a game between uh, another somebody trying to improve its standard, I mean, standing on the log, and one guys fighting for survival. All right. Uh, you can, we have to leave uh, Nigeria football. We're about to go on a break, but let me ask you this. Uh, you've been monitoring the news, and of course, we are beginning to see the after effects of the Russia invasion of Ukraine. Today, the news hit the media. Uh, will the organizers of uh, Wimbledon, uh, the year's uh, third Grand Slam, they've decided that Russian and Belarusian athletes will not be allowed to compete. You're talking about Daniel Medvedev, Andre Rublev, Arena Sabalenka, some of these stars would not grace the occasion in case uh, so, something happens. So my, my, my question to you quickly before we go uh, on the break, do you think uh, this is justified? A lot of people will argue that these guys have not done anything. And some will say, well, you are guilty by association. No, no. You, you know, um, there's no individual without an association when it comes to sport. And at the same time, um, what is... Uh, is not happy with uh, the invasion of um, Ukraine, and everybody will look. I mean, every association or everybody, I okay, mean, all bodies, y are looking for a way. Okay, you yeah. I need to pause you quickly now. We'll get back to this. We'll just go on a break right about now. When we return from that break, I'll allow you. I'll allow you continue from uh, where you left it off, uh, talking about the ban on the Russian and the Belarusian tennis players by the organizers of Wimbledon. All right, uh, I see I have, uh, welcome back. I see I have Yika Wilawa uh, with me. We're talking everything sports. And Yika was uh, beginning to explain what it feels about uh, the decision to exclude Russia and Belarusian players from Wimbledon. We, we knew it was going to get to this uh, at some point. But now that it has happened, what's your thoughts? All right, so that's Daniel Medvedev in your picture. Uh, very promising, talented, uh, young uh, Russian. Uh, of course, been to many Grand Slam finals, has a couple uh, titles to his name. Uh, so he will not play unless something happens. Uh, you, you never can rule that out. Arena Sabalenka as well, Andre Roblev uh, as well, and some of the other guys who will not get uh, the opportunity to show uh, what they are capable of. And, of course, we'll also see what the other Grand Slam organizers will do. Uh, the French Open organizers, what are they going to do? The U.S. Open organizers. But then we must quickly say that the WTA has roundly condemned uh, this decision to ban uh, these uh, players. In their own view, it shouldn't have happened. All right? So, Yika, let, let, let's just take off from where, where we left it. WTA, uh, the ones... Representing the ladies, uh, I've not heard anything from ATP, uh, but the WTA condemning the decision to ban these players. Well, I think it's an opportunity um, for everybody um, to tell a story uh, to Russia that um, the invasion is uh, inhuman and um, it's not going to be accepted by, by any standard. And um, for everybody to feel the weight of that, is very important, very important in the sense that um, uh, one of the things that bring uh, humanity together is sports. And by the time that people are denied the opportunity to represent or to participate in major competition because of uh, the invasion 
uh, of a particular country, I think Russia will be feeling the heat both home and abroad. And it is very, very important for, uh, I know how important it is for, uh, I mean, for Hartley to participate in some of these major uh, tournaments. So any moment, I mean, for as long as uh, the invasion is concerned, people will begin to tell the story, bo, I mean, at the local scene for the authority, for the country to realize that, yeah, what you are doing is not right and it's beginning to take a toll on every one of us. Yeah. Um, I mean, we are, we are seeing club sites uh, in Europe who are, you know, denied the opportunity to continue to play because of that particular decision. I, I think it's a decision that is um, in order, that is worth taking, and that I really support. All right, we'll see whether other tournament organizers will follow suit. We'll, we'll see what happens in we that world. Let's give you... Okay, we'll see. Uh, let's quickly show you the situation uh, report across England now. The English Premier League, some matches have been concluded now. You have uh, Arsenal going to Stamford Bridge and winning 4-2. That's a big surprise uh, in there. You also have Everton and Leicester playing out a one-all draw. Newcastle United continue uh, with their impressive performance under Hedy Howe. Uh, a one of victory over Crystal Palace. Then Manchester City, 89 minutes of football play and it's not over yet. They're leading Brighton 3-0. Of course, he ends this way. They return to the top of uh, the English Premier League. Okay, all right, as we go, let's talk about boxing on the show tonight. Of course, there's been uh, a lot of uh, criticism for uh, Tyson Fury and Dillian White, both of them been accused of not promoting this fight as much as uh, they should. Uh, Dylan White, I mean, choosing to skip uh, some of those uh, events. But today, he showed up and uh, Fury, uh, that's WBC champion, is, is promising a bound stall uh, of a title fight uh, with uh, White. Let's just quickly listen to Tyson Fury uh, and, and Dylan White. And of course, we'll come back, listen to Yeka and we'll wrap things up. On the show. To coming back, being mentally ill, a druggy, an alcoholic, all the rest of the stuff that is not, I'm not ashamed of. It's a part of who I am. Um, to coming back, to getting back to the top of the world and having three big fights with old Deontay over there. Uh, and now being back in England after all these years, four years away, and now I'm fighting me, me old pal Dillian White back at home in England for all the glory and all the belts. And, and who'd have thought it, you know? I, it, it, we probably didn't think, me and him didn't think we'd be doing 90 odd thousand people at Wembley. He got Mr. Golden Ball at seven years, he's been stopped by a middleweight. Um, and that's it. Where is he now? You know? We're, we're here, we're representing, and we're going to put on a good show, you know. Fans are in for a, a real treat, 94,000 people. They're going to see a good tear-up. I know Dillian, I know him personally, and he knows me, and we're going to rock and roll on the night. We're ready to throw down and treat you all to a hell of a barnstorm. I don't worry about that. And for the world title, especially at Wimbledon, it's not too far from where I'm from, you know. It's, it, it means everything. It's massive, you know. This is a moment of waiting for, obviously, in this big fight. Like Tyson said, me and him was me and him. You know, we, we weren't expect to be here, me especially anyway, obviously I'm here, you know, I've taken risks time and time and time again, I've been a couple of slip up along the way, but I'm here and I'm ready to go. It's a different challenge, you know, I can say challenge, I must be in my A game, I must have work, but you know, we we'll work. All right, that's Dillian White and uh, Tyson Fury, uh, the champion and the challenger. Yinka, we gotta go, uh, you have a few seconds, just about 10 seconds, before I let you go, Quickly, the bout is Saturday. Who do you think is winning? No analysis, just straight away. Who do you think is winning? Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury. Tyson All right. Fury. Okay. We'll that's do this one, again. That's one boxer I really a lot. Okay. 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 Uh, it's, on, it's live on TV. So uh, when next we meet, I'll remind you, you said Tyson Fury. Inka Willem, I want to thank you for your time on the show today. Hopefully we'll do this another time. <laughs> Thank you. All right, that's our man, Nika Ole. We're filling us in with uh, what is happening in the amazing fast pace, money spinning world of sports. That's the show today. We do hope that you enjoyed everything. We'll be back here again tomorrow. Yeah, me at the buyer. Bye bye now.